Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. This is the fourth lesson in a series of lessons about nuclear chemistry. In previous lessons, we've talked about how to write out alpha decay, beta decay. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to write out the reaction for electron capture. We're gonna capture an electron and emit radiation. So go get your notes, go get something to write with, and let's get started. Electron capture. Now, this is gonna be a little bit weird, but kinda of everything has been, right? A nucleus is gonna undergo electron capture again to solve the problem of too many protons. In a previous lesson, we talked about positron decay. That also was when we had too many protons. I guess you could say that nuclei have choices in the type of decay, and oftentimes, different types of decay is happening to the same element kind of at the same time. So these aren't happening independent of each other. These are the types of decay that the nucleus could do to fix its problem. And remember, its problem is being either too big or that ratio between protons and neutrons is just, the difference is just too great. When a nucleus undergoes electron capture, again, this is to solve the problem for too many protons. And I am realizing that problem was the same problem that positron decay fixed. This is slightly different though, but we still have a proton changing into a neutron. But with electron capture, what happens is we have our proton, and then we're gonna add to that an electron. So when we have a proton and electron, we can slam those together using that strong force, and we can get a neutron. So we're still turning a proton into a neutron, just like in positron decay, but we're doing it a little bit differently. In positron decay, the proton decayed into a neutron and a positron. In electron capture, what's going to happen is, okay, so let's say we have an atom. I know it's not very pretty, is it? But what's going to happen is when the nucleus is unstable, because it has too many protons, it is gonna grab an innermost electron and it's gonna pull it into a proton to make us a new neutron. I know that's really weird. The nucleus is going to pull an electron in. That's why this is called electron capture. And then when that proton slams into the electron, they can combine using those strong forces and make a neutron. Now let me back up just a tiniest a bit while I'm talking about this electron. This electron here came from the electron shell. That means it is a normal electron. We cannot call this a beta particle. We cannot call it that because remember the beta particle has high energy because it originated in the nucleus. So when it shot out, it shot out with high energy beta particle. This electron came from an energy level. It is a normal electron. So we can only ever use this symbol here to show that electron. We cannot use beta particle symbol. So if we wanna talk about electron capture and what kind of decay, what that nuclear reaction is going to look like, we're gonna have our atom. Here's our atom here. We're gonna add an electron to it. We're capturing it. Now we're gonna have our yield zero. A proton is turning into a neutron. That's the overall situation. A proton is turning into a neutron. So when we have our new element here, that new element is going to have one less proton and one more neutron. And since we're just exchanging protons and neutrons again, no mass change. Let's make sure we got all that information. Okay, so for an electron capture, that an inner electron is being pulled into the nucleus, a proton is changed into a neutron. Now this is going to be a little bit different. When we pull an electron into the nucleus, it is going to release energy. The energy that's being released is gamma rays. Electron capture also emits X-rays. Remember when electrons fall energy levels, that energy has to go somewhere and we normally see that as visible light. And we talked about excited electrons being so far out when they fall down, they emit light. Well, when this inner electron is being pulled into the nucleus, since that energy change is so great, it's emitting X-rays and gamma rays. Okay, so let's do an example. Again, we're gonna count protons and neutrons and all that good stuff on this first example. But let's remember what's happening here. We're gonna have a proton. We're gonna add it to an electron. That's going to give us a neutron. So that's why I kinda have a little bit of space here. We've gotta add our electron. We gotta capture it. Electron capture. Now electron capture, this is the only one that we put the electron or we put anything on the reactant side. So this one should be pretty easy to identify because it is the only one that's going to have its particle on the reactant side because we're capturing it. So we have 24 protons here because it's number 24. If we want to figure out the number of neutrons, we would have to subtract because remember, 
protons plus neutrons is the mass number. So if you want the number of neutrons, you're gonna take the mass number and subtract it by the proton number or the atomic number. And we're gonna have 27. So let's see what we should have on the other side. Now remember, a proton is being turned into a neutron, so our proton number is going down by one. So instead of having 24 protons, we're gonna have 23 protons. And since a proton is being turned into a neutron, we're gonna have one more neutron that gives us 28 neutrons. So to figure out what this mystery element is, we need to go to the periodic table, look for number 23, that's how many protons it has, that's vanadium. And then to get its mass number, we need to add the mass. If we add protons and neutrons, we get 51. When we're making protons from neutrons or neutrons from protons, mass number always stays the same because protons and neutrons have the same mass. In this example, electron capture, a proton changes into a neutron, so we go down one proton. So our atomic number decreases by one, mass stays the same. Let's try one where we figure out the reactant. Okay, let's write our little note. A proton, when the nucleus captures an electron, can turn into a neutron. So after electron capture is done, we have 36 protons. So that means before we captured that electron, we had 37 protons. Remember, the mass doesn't change because a proton turns into a neutron, same mass. Now to figure out what that element started as, we need to look at number 37, rubidium. When rubidium-81 captures an electron, it decays into krypton-81. I want you to do these next two examples on your own. Pause it, work through them, come back, make sure you did it correct. Okay, so let's capture that electron. We're remembering that a proton is turning into a neutron, so we're going down one proton. Mass stays the same. And then to get that new element, we just look at the periodic table, 52, that's tellurium. So in iodine-125, you always call the isotope by its mass number. Iodine-125, goes through electron capture, it decays into tellurium-125. Okay, again, I want you to try this one on your own. Okay, so we know that 18 is after a proton turned into a neutron. So on this side, we need one more proton, so we would start with 19. Mass number is going to stay the same. I know I keep saying it over and over and over, when protons turn into neutrons, the mass doesn't change. To figure out what element this is, we go to the periodic table and find number 19, and that is potassium. Potassium-40, when it undergoes electron capture decay, decays into argon-40. Protons turning into neutrons, neutrons turning into protons, electrons escaping the nucleus. Now you can see why nuclear chemistry is its own little branch of chemistry. I still need to talk about positron decay. Until next time, bye y'all.